we're going to take just a couple of minutes um, hearing my voice. So they were in there wrestling with each other. Then when they heard me speaking, they became quiet. We are, like I said, we're getting to that point where there's an understanding. However, I do realize that there is not quite an understanding with all of the new people who've ventured over to this channel over the last couple of years, and they hadn't come to know me. Just this day, I've had one person curse while on the phone with me, and I was trying to resolve a situation with them. Knew who he was. I'd spoken to him before. And then I had a person email me and use a curse word in the actual subject line, the caption of the email. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry. <laughs> I may come close, but you've never heard me curse and you never will. You don't get the curse around me. Let me let me see if I could explain it better this way. When I was in school, we had a guy named Newport. I'm just remembering that because I had this conversation with him as well. But when I was in school, ladies and gentlemen, all of my friends knew that if you cursed around me, you didn't get to be around me. I know, I know, I know. You don't understand, and I'm gonna help. I'm gonna try to help you understand. I'm downloading another version of ZDSoft. That's what's in the background. But I'm gonna try to help you understand because I know you don't understand. I promise you, I know you don't understand because you think you know me because you've listened to a couple of videos, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody who's ever ever been around me has been around me because they wanted to be around me, not because I wanted to be around them. Let's just make sure that that's understood. You all are not the first set of people who have shown an interest in my person. But while in school, the popularity, individuals wanted to be around me because of a couple of things. They knew I was honest. Again, like I said, when people were around me in the past, you never went in your pocket. You never had to go in your pocket because I paid for everything. Anybody who knew me knows that, as my friend's mother would say, you shows know what to say, okay? So let me let you know. Those people were not allowed to curse. There were three rules. They could never curse around me was the number one. Could never lie to me and they could never betray me. Those were my three rules. Those were the three major rules. There were no other rules. Well, we also, no, I'm sorry, we did have another rule. Sorry, one more rule. That if we got upset with each other, we would resolve it before the sunset or before the sun rose. Sorry, that was the, that was the friendship rule. Those people who I was friends with, all of my friends knew that rule. We could not remain upset with each other for more than a half a day at the most but the idea was was to clear up the problem as soon as possible but nobody was allowed to curse around me there was only one person that i did permit sorry i'm gonna have to send this person to voicemail hold on a second because i can't see the screen so i can't see who's calling uh i gotta answer this Hold on one second, okay? I gotta put them on pause. It's a video thing. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that was somebody who is incarcerated, and as I told you, when people who are incarcerated call me, I answer the phone. Just that simple. It is just that way. And y'all will be put on hold so that I can take care of that. I've already downloaded this program. I'm waiting to install it. I can't install it now because I'm using the program. See, this is the program being used. Ladies and gentlemen, this is called the fee waiver video. Please understand that fee waiver video is talking about how the fact that they charge you fees when they receive an annual budget. You all need to pay attention to that video because as I told him, the young man who just called, somebody is going to pick up on the information in that video. They're gonna realize, wait a minute, the courts already receive a budget? The, the, the fees have already been paid and here I am paying a second time? And they're going to bring a case, a class action lawsuit against the administrative office of the United States courts because that's the one who provides the budget for the courts. And they're going to bring it against them because why? They are not the courts. They are an administrative branch of the administrative branch of government. Other words, the executive branch. 
and they'll bring it on behalf of the class, which they are a party to, and when it goes to the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court will have to hear it because it affects the majority of people who access the court. Interesting, ain't it? Ladies and gentlemen, how do you get a petition heard by the Supreme Court? You show how it affects a majority of the people in the United States. They cannot ignore that. Why? Because they are there to protect the general public and the interests of the general public. Sorry, Charlie. Not supposed to know that type of information. Sorry, getting back to growing up and the people who were allowed to be around me, there was one young man. His name was Bill. Will Bill. He, <laughs> he didn't let me call him Bill, but he allowed me to call him Will. And I played with him all the time with the Bill and Will. When Will and I first started hanging out with each other, I don't know, we just clicked. He was a down-to-earth young man. He was about two years younger than me, a grade lower than me, and we kicked it. I had a car, he didn't. Eventually he did get a car, and that's all he could think about was pausing and burning and rubber and all of that stuff. But Will and I, he learned how to drive. I trusted him. As a matter of fact, I would say I trusted the young man with my life. We, we hung out like, sorry, clothes on a laundry line, clothing line. That's how much we hung out. The very first week we knew each other, I spent three weeks over his house. I only went home to change. Three straight weeks I spent over his house, sleeping on the floor. We just talked, played video games, and hung out. Will was a very good friend. However, he was the only person that was allowed to curse around me. He was the only one whom I had enough respect for that I wasn't going to put that restriction on him. Now, I, don't get me wrong, I regret it to this day that I did that. He never, he never overstepped or crossed that line with me. The entire time I knew him, he never disrespected me. But I will say, I was a virgin until I was 20, going on 21. It was Will who introduced the hoe to me. Yes, she was a, in my mind, she was a hoe. But it was Will because he wanted me to lose that virginity thing. See, as one of Jehovah's Witnesses, at that time, I was disfellowshipped, but still a Jehovah's Witness. Even though a person is disfellowshipped from the congregation of the Kingdom Hall, they're still a Jehovah's Witness. You don't lose that because you make a promise, a dedication. It was Jesus and the prophet Isaiah and Moses who told an individual that it is better that they do not make a vow to God and not pay it. Why? Because he will hold you to your vow. So I understood that. And so when Will brought the hoe along, he even provided the vacant apartment that his father owned because his father owned apartment buildings. And let's just say it wasn't anything worthwhile giving up that thing that I used to tell people I was something that they never could be when they kept telling me I was a virgin at the age of 20 and 19 and 18 and 14 and 15 and they, this is all the people, that's all they wanted to know was, had this happened, had that happened, and I would simply say, no, I haven't. And they would start laughing, and I would look at them, and i say, but hold on, I'm something you can never be. That was my response. Man, you're square! No, because the women, young ladies, would look at the guys and say, you know what, he's right. Yeah, I'm right. I'm logical. Of course I'm right. I'm always right, mother... Uh, sorry, apologize. Ladies and gentlemen, after Will, I promised I would never, ever, ever let my guard down with anybody else. Never. And since then, there's never been a person that's been allowed to curse around me. See, here's the thing. I don't control people. I can't tell you what you can and cannot say. 
but I can tell you what you can and cannot say to me. And if you ignore that, if you disrespect me in such a way, guess what I do? I don't speak to you anymore. I cut you completely off. I drop you worse than a bad habit. I kid you not. See, bad habits can be picked back up. But the bad habits I drop, they're so far off a cliff that there is no rescue. What I'm trying to say is, I have my standards. I will not lower my standards ever again for another human being. Ever. You know, my best friend Kev, who died in 1990, he understood that. He never asked me to do anything, nor did he ever do anything around me that he knew would offend me. As a matter of fact, that was his chief concern. And to this day, I promise you, a man after my own heart, because he respected me as a person. And I will not ever permit his spot to be taken by anyone. I just had a conversation with another person who was asking me about being my friend. And I had to let him know that there is no vacancies for friendship. I don't have friends. I don't want friends. I believe in the resurrection wholeheartedly. So pay attention. Just want to make sure that everybody knows this. Jehovah is my best friend. Jehovah and I go back like rocking chairs, okay? So Jehovah is my best friend, and I'm rolling with him until the wheels of his celestial chariot fall off. Just to make sure you guys understand, his son, Christ Jesus, my brother, is my best friend. My best friend Kev that passed away that Jehovah promises to resurrect. Yeah, that's right. He gave a guarantee that he will resurrect that young man and several billion others. I trust Jehovah when he gives me his word. When Jehovah says he's going to do something, my best friend keeps his word. I've never seen my best friend not keep his word. And nobody's ever, ever documented him not keeping his word. So I can trust that he will keep his word. So, my best friend Kevin, although he has passed away, the same thing that Jesus said, the same thing that Paul said, he speaks of them as they are living. I speak of my best friend Kevin as if he is still alive because he is not dead to me. He is just asleep. Even what Jesus said about Lazarus, that he was asleep. And they laughed at him. Look at that. Lazarus was just asleep and he woke up. Now, if you guys don't understand the resurrection, John 11 chapter, the only chapter in the Bible that talks about Lazarus' resurrection, but take a note, that chapter, the 11th chapter of John, is the only chapter in the Bible that explains what happens to death succinctly, lets you know what happens from beginning to end, lets you know how Jesus views it and how his father views it. And those of you who believe that Jesus is God, when he resurrected Lazarus, look at who he asked for help to resurrect Lazarus. If Jesus was God, he wouldn't need nobody's help. Stop it! People, you need to stop. Now, that we've gotten that out of the way, my best brother, Christ Jesus, let me explain to you. That's my brother. He is my big brother. He's got my back. I don't worry about nobody messing with me. See, you guys gotta understand something. The Bible says that if a person doesn't take care of members who are part of his own household, then he's worse than a man without faith. Well, do you not know the person saying that would be a hypocrite if they themselves did not take care of those who were members of their household? Somebody has invited me into their household to be his brother and to be his son. Jesus to be his brother, Jehovah to be his son. Ladies and gentlemen, they're going to take care of me. I'm not worried. As long as I don't disrespect the system, they got my back. Now look, 15 minutes, just if you're going to communicate with me, ladies and gentlemen, you can't do the cursing. That's all this video is about. Just that simple. Yes, I, I've explained a couple of things, but I did that so that people can know where I'm coming from, so that people can understand where I'm coming from, because a lot of people are not getting me. And I'm sorry for that. 
Yes, I know that I'm putting out information that other people are not putting out. Yes, I know that a lot of people, look, this is what I'm talking about. Now, this right here, these numbers have changed. So let me go ahead and, yeah, let's go ahead and refresh it so you see the numbers have changed. But these are not the current numbers. Ladies and gentlemen, I promise you these are not the current numbers. How do I know these are not the current numbers? Because this is Google. I know Google is manipulating these numbers. Why? Because on average per day, on average, I'm averaging over a thousand views per video per day. I know this to be a fact because I can check the system on the back end and eventually I'll do a video showing you that discrepancy in the figures. This is what Google shows me. Because why? Because they want me to try to prep things up so I can advertise. They want me to try to prep things up so I can get more subscribers. See, that's what they want. They want me advocating for more subscribers. See, I get more subscribers than they could do more advertising. Ladies and gentlemen, I ain't got time for that stupidity. Okay? I'm putting this information out for free for you all. Some of you realize how valuable the information is. The individual who just contacted me who was doing the cursing in the email, I simply told him, don't do that again. If you do it again, I will block you. I think you need to rethink it and come back at me the right way. He hasn't sent another email, and I do understand pride. Pride is a mother. Okay? And that's okay because, ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to disrespect me, I don't have time for you. This is me. I've been this way all my life. I am more important to me than you are to me. I respect me a great deal. I told you once I was 26 years old. I thought it was 28, but it was 26. When I was 26 years old and I stood in front of that mirror and I found 10 things about myself that I appreciated, 10 things that I appreciated. I had one person say he did it. He found 10 things about himself that he liked and 10 things about himself that he didn't like. Then I said, you just canceled it out. How in the world would you do that? Why would you do that? Cancel out the good. Ladies and gentlemen, find 10 things about yourself that you like. Look in that mirror and look and say it to yourself find that 10 things while looking at yourself ladies and gentlemen i have to take these dogs out because they gotta go and that means i gotta go hey i hope y'all take care we'll talk in a minute goodbye <laughs>